cookies can be really useful in doing a bunch of stuff. For example, verifying front-end requests or doing a lot of stuff. They have so many use cases and today we're going to cover how to work with them in Next.js. First, we're going to take a look at how middleware works in Next.js and how do you define it and how do you specify when it runs. And then in the second step, we're going to take a closer look at how to work with cookies and headers in Next.js middleware. I think understanding the core concepts of middleware, so cookies and headers, are really beneficial for your future projects and understanding Next.js and so let's get right into it. Okay, here we are in a Next.js project and now to get started with the middleware, we're gonna want to initialize a new file and call it middleware.ts, so that's uh, quite straightforward. And what you really need to pay attention to is that this middleware file is at the same level as our pages, or in this case, in Next.js 13, the app directory. And only then will the middleware work. Now, from this middleware, we're going to export a function. Let's call it middleware, but you can, I think you can call it whatever you want. It's going to take a request that is going to be a next request. We're going to get that from the next slash server, this type. And then let's just return a next response, which we also get from the next server dot next. Now, if we log to the console middleware ran, and I think the server is already started. Yes, it is. Um, so let's head over to the server, reload the page and see what happens in the console. Oh, by the way, I can make the code a bit larger for you. Okay, so if you look into the console, as we can see, the middleware ran a bunch of times. Why did it do that? Well, we can take a look at that. So if we um, log out the request and then say request dot next URL dot path name, log that out for every request. We can actually, we can just remove this, save that. And when we reload the page, we should be able to see um, all the paths that you know, Next.js has requested. And this is very interesting. So it's the home page because that's what we loaded in the browser. But the home page also needs a bunch of files. So that would be the CSS, the um, webpack.js, mainapp.js, then also the little icon that is at the top. And we can see all files that are being requested in the middleware because at the moment this runs for every um, single requested item. Now, if we want to limit that, um, I've got the documentation over here um, on the left. If you want to limit that, we can export export a constant and call it a config. And that is going to be equal to an object. And now in here, we can define the matcher, the matcher. And uh, it's pretty much just going to be a string. And this cannot be dynamic, so it can't be um, generated at request time or whatever. This will be um, done at build time. So that's why this uh, matcher will be just a regular string. And for example, we can say slash. So that means only the home page. So whenever this is true, then the middleware will run. And this is only true, well, for one of the base paths that we have seen, the one right here. And that's why the request, um, like the middleware only runs for the home page. Now we wouldn't really have to say this. We could also do something similar. We could say if request.nextURL dot path name uh, dot starts with and then we could say something like slash and if the path name starts with slash we're going to return the next response to next and we're going to log out middleware ran and get rid of this for a second now it's quite interesting what you're going to see now so if we read out the page you're going to be able to see hmm, okay so the middleware run a bunch of times again and that is because as you remember the path name the, the path names all started with a slash, right? We have slash favicon, we have slash underscore next static and uh, for those three. And then we have just the basic homepage that also starts with a slash. And that's why it runs five times because we're not really limiting anything with the statement, but it still works. So you could use that instead of the matcher if it suits your use case. And while there's a lot to be said about the logic that we can use in middlewares, that's not really what we're gonna get into in this video. We are gonna focus on working with cookies and that's why I've got Chrome open here because I am thoroughly convinced that Chrome just makes working with cookies way more enjoyable than something like Firefox. And okay, so how do we work with cookies? So. Um, let's return the next response dot next again. Oops dot next. So that just means um, oops, and we need the response. 
there we go and that just means okay do whatever you actually intended to do so we are intercepting the request in the middleware and then saying okay you can just go on and do whatever you set out to do if we want to get a cookie in the next.js middleware we can say const uh, cookie is equal is equal to and then we can say request dot cookies dot get so as you can see this right here um, is something like a map when we hover over it we can see um, it's of type next cookies we can say dot and then like entries for each uh, like for each cookie that we have uh, has and keys there's a bunch of cool stuff we can use and we're gonna say get and we are gonna get um, a cookie called auth now that auth cookie um, probably doesn't exist right so where would that come from let's say cookie and then log out the cookie and when we reload the page like this, let's take a look at what happens in the browser console. So cookie is undefined, interesting. And now in this case, I do want the matcher. So at export const config is equal to an object. Then inside this object, we're gonna have the matcher, which is equal to the homepage because that is the only time we want this middleware to run. So in this case, it should log out, you know, cookie undefined once that's what it does okay now let's go into chrome and actually set that cookie so we can go to application and if you didn't know this you can see all the cookies a website uses if you go to the chrome dev tools and then under cookies you could see every cookie and in this instance we can see there are no cookies so let's set one let's say the auth cookie and it has a value of one so we are auth pretty much in this case we are not checking for the value we're just checking if the cookie exi exists though so technically, if we reload the page right now, um, the auth cookie is here. And now in the console, it will log out the value of the cookie. And this is an instance where the documentation of Next.js is actually a bit wrong. Because in the documentation, I've got it open here on my left. Um, the way they get the cookie is by doing this. So they're saying const cookies equal to request.cookies.get.nextjs.value. And we can change this to rec. And as we can see, this value doesn't exist. So if we change this to auth, um, we could change this to value of and see what happens. Because, well, we can't use value, it doesn't exist. Let's see what it logs out. And now it logs out the value. Okay, so we could either use this right here, this syntax, and that should return the one if we reload the page, or we could use the dot value of and um, invoke that. And that will log out exactly the same thing. So it doesn't really matter what you do as long as you don't follow the actual um, Next.js documentation because that won't work. Okay, now that we've got the cookie, we can do something with the cookie. Um, or we could get all cookies. Let's take a look at how to get all cookies. So if we say const all cookies is equal to request.cookies and then in the documentation, then they do get all which doesn't exist and i find that to be very confusing um so what i, I figured out is that we can just say all cookies is equal to request.cookies and then if we log out all cookies as you can see that will work just fine so let's reload the page and take a look at all cookies we can see it's an object and that has the auth and auth is equal to one at the path of the home page so exactly what we want pretty much now we can take a look at what functions we could do we could say, you know, values, um, we can try that. I don't think that will work though. We can reload the page, uh, see what it logs out and it just logs out an empty object. So that won't work, but uh, request.cookies just, you know, it works just fine. Now, if we wanted to check for a particular cookie for, so in, in our instance, that would be the auth cookie, we can also do that. So we can say um, const is auth is equal to, um, or actually no, let's, let's not do that just so you can see it a bit better, I'm gonna log it out to the console. So is auth, and then we're gonna say request.cookies. And then we can see um, all the functions we can use. And in this case, we're gonna use the has. So we're gonna check, is this cookie existent? So let's do auth. And as we can see right now, when we reload the page in this uh, console, we can see is auth is true. That means the cookie is existing. Now it does not um, say anything about the value. So the value could be empty. And if we reload the page, it would still say is auth true just because the cookie actually exists. So be careful when using this, it just um, looks into the cookies and sees does it exist. 
Now, if we see that it has the cookie, we can also delete it. So we can say, and um, before the is auth is even ran, rec.cookies.delete, and then we can delete the auth from that uh, cookies and see what happens. So reload the page. And now the is auth is false because originally the cookie existed, um, but we are and like deleting it, removing it, and then logging out does it exist. And obviously after deleting it, no, it doesn't exist anymore. So reloading the page, um, no, it doesn't exist. Yet in the browser, it still does exist. So we're not actually deleting the cookie from the browser. We can reload this. And as you can see, the cookie still persists. Now, working with cookies and getting them is all fun and games, but we, we also want to work with them. So we can say a next response, and the response is the argument we get as the second uh, parameter of the middleware function. And now we can say something like response uh, dot cookies, and now we also have a bunch of options, and we could say like set, and then we're gonna set a new cookie that says, you know, um, is auth uh, two, and then we're going to set the value of that. Let's just have a string that says true. And now we can set out, um, we can log out the um, response, say response.cookies, save that and reload the browser page. And let's see what happens. Um, oh, cannot read properties of undefined reading set. Okay, that is interesting. Um, so why is that happening? Okay, because we can't set the actual response, we do need to um, say something like this. So let's define the uh, response as the next response dot next. And now we can say response dot cookies dot set. And we are going to set is auth, is auth two. We're going to set that to a string of true. We can remove this from the uh, arguments. We don't need that anymore. And then let's log out the response and say response dot cookies. Now, okay, let's see what happens. We're going to read out the page. And now let's take a look at the browser and is auth is auth two is equal to true. So exactly what we want. And now instead of returning next response or next, we can just return the response. And that will, uh, you know, include the headers we set on that response, um, not the headers, the cookies we set on that response. Okay, and the reason I said um, headers um, accidentally instead of cookies is because we can also set headers. So we can say, for example, the next response dot next is equal to the response, but then in here we can pass an object. And that object uh, can have a bunch of properties of so status text, status request, and headers. In our instance, we are going to worry about the request because we're going to modify the request headers in Next.js, which is not really hard to do. So this takes a headers and that headers is going to be the original request headers. So that could just be rec dot headers, or you could also say a um, new headers inside of here, we can pass the request dot headers. So, you know, um, that also works. And below this response, we can now do something like response dot headers dot. And again, we have a bunch of options we can have here. We can say uh, for each um, header, we can say log out the header and say header. Let's see what happens. Let's reload the browser page, open the um, console. And okay, wow, that's a, a bunch of headers. So we have the max age, we have the keep alive, the auth, we can just see every header that is in our um, response. Now, if we wanted to modify it, we wouldn't, you know, just log them out, we would say response dot headers, and then we can set or custom header. So we can say something like x custom auth header, and let's set that value to, you know, is auth or whatever you want to set it to pretty much. Uh, we can save that. And then because we are returning this exact response, and not something like next response dot next, which wouldn't work, because of that, we can see that our headers will get passed. So we need to return this response. And now before sending out that response, we can say console log, oops, console log, a response headers. And in here, we could say um, response dot headers. And in here, we, we should be able to see our custom header that we have just set. So we can refresh, we can see is auth2 and auth in our browser console. And here we can see 
all of our headers. Now we don't care about many of these, but we can worry about one of them that is down here. So X custom auth header is auth, and you know, you can work with that on the um, server side or wherever you want to work with the header. Um, yeah, that can be really useful just setting them here in the middleware. And that is pretty much all there is to working with headers and cookies. I'm gonna link the um, original documentation and further reading if you wanna get more into the topic. But those are the basics and I think those will cover like 95% of the use cases. So for example, when working in a real production application, you could um, check if user has a cookie, a certain one. And if they don't, then you assign them a user ID. So that is a common use case for me personally. Um, let's just get rid of this error for a second. Um, if they don't have a cookie, you assign them a random user ID by generating one with an NPM package. And if they already do, then we can just forward the request. And I think that would be just one of the most common use cases. Um, so every user gets a cookie that has a custom user ID that you can use to, you know, just verify, um, for example, front end request from. So for instance, I remember the uh, startup we built together on this YouTube channel, there is a demo and whenever uh, you go into the application settings, you can see um, that each user has a user token that we send along when making a request to the um, artificial intelligence that powers this application that doesn't work at the moment, but um, you know, just like the, the um, AI itself doesn't work at the moment the user token does. So yeah, that would be one common use case you could use Next.js middleware for. Okay, that's pretty much it. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.